Hey bag maker, today I'm going to be talking about the lint magnet. We're entering week four of the Chickadee Backpack Sew Along. New fabrics that I've added to my stash by Juicy Juice. The Alaska quilt pattern. I'll be demonstrating the beginner bag makers toolkit and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. I see Janet's watching from New Zealand, Sarah from Chile, New York, uh, North Carolina, I'm sorry, Denise is watching from Pennsylvania, and Shirley from uh, Kansas City. I'm trying to get all my abbreviations correct there. Um, welcome to Social Sunday, I'm so glad you're here, whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording later on during the week. Just a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the books, fabrics, notions, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So the notion of the week this week was a recommendation from my friend Sarah. And by the way, if you ever have a recommendation for um, an interesting looking notion that you'd like me to review, um, perhaps a book you'd like me to review on the show, etc., you can always drop me a line. My email is sarah at sosweetness.com. That's Sarah with no H. And Sarah let me know that this lint magnet looked pretty interesting. So Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera so that I can show you how it works. So this is what the packaging looks like. And it's basically, if you've used high density craft foam for any of my patterns in the past, there's a few patterns that I have, such as the sewing machine travel bag that uses half inch craft foam. So this is very similar to that, except it's one inch. Um, I did purchase this because I was interested in reviewing it on the show, but if you come across some one inch high density craft foam, it's about the same thing. I'm not sure if it works out to be more expensive or cheaper, but um, anyway, this is what I purchased to review on the show. And I tried to get my cutting board messied up with some threads and I used my rotary cutter to cut a bit of fabric into basically shreds just because I wanted to have something for uh, the lint magnet to pick up. So I'm gonna try to pick up all the big pieces really get those out of the way. Um, the packaging for the lint magnet says um, if it ever gets full of lots of fibers and you want to clear it off, all you need to do is uh, rinse it with some water and it'll air dry and then you can use it like new. So um, I tried this before the show. As you can see, I kind of just dabbed it on there and it picked everything up. And the bigger pieces, as you can see, like it picked up pretty decent sized pieces. Um, I actually have this problem when I'm cutting out fabric for a pattern. Everything gets um, on my t cutting table and I know this sounds really bad, but I usually just brush it with my hand onto the ground, which is, you know, my carpet is really full of uh, lots of stuff over there. So anyway, this is uh, how it works and then you can just kind of brush it off over your garbage can. Um, and if you have any threads or fibers embedded in your cutting mat, which happens sometimes, especially with an older mat that can kind of clean things up. Um, this this mat hasn't been used a whole lot, so um, it's relatively clean and you can use it to clean off your um, rotary cutters, things like that. And Violet actually gave me, I was laughing before the show because she gave me a pair of pants that came out of the dryer and they're a little bit linty. I'm not sure if this will show up on camera, but she said, oh, you know, you can use your, you know, new little, oh gosh, I just got some... Uh, stuff from my fabric on her pants. Well, anyway, she gave me the task of cleaning her um, pants off so she could wear them to school tomorrow. So um, if you're interested in checking out more about this, it's called the Lint Magnet. And the link um, to find this is in the description. Uh, let's see, um, we are entering week four of the Chickadee Backpack Sew Along. So if you've been sewing along and recording your progress up until now. Week four is the last week of the sew along, so you have until November 15th to finish your backpack and post a photo of your finished backpack on my blog. So the link to where you can post your finished backpack is in the description. And again, you have until November 15th to post your photo and 
we'll be awarding some extra prizes since this is the last week and I think I may have a helper or two um, choose some winners, winners in addition to um, the randomly drawn winners that we normally have uh, for the so long. So again, the link to week four is in the description. So I've added, um, I don't know what's been up lately, but I found a lot of fun fabrics and I've added a lot of fabrics to my stash. So I'm not showing them all at once. I'm saving some for the rest of the year, but um, two fabric lines that I've purchased, um, Spooky and Sweet, Spooky and Sweeter, and then a new fabric line from Juicy Juice called Nana. So I'm going to show you those in the overhead camera. So my friend Jen, I know Halloween's over, but my friend Jen was making a Halloween quilt with this, these two fabric lines from Art Gallery Fabrics. And um, I was really inspired by seeing her quilt and um, two of the fabrics from the line are panel prints, which of course you could use for say a trigger treat bag, but I saw Jen's quilt and she used the big panels and cut out additional large squares for her quilt. So I really liked, um, as you can see from the panel, there's some little plushies that you can make as well. Um, but I was really inspired to make uh, a quilt after I saw Jen's. And so here's the other panel print with some, as you can see. So her, her blocks were, uh, were basically the size of the panels. And then she filled in with some other fabrics, um, other fabrics from the same fabric line. So I thought these were really cute and I thought it would make a really quick quilt. So these are the rest of the prints from those two fabric lines. Um, spooky and sweet and spooky and sweeter. So I'm just going to cut these prints the same size as those panels and then I'll sew them all together. So I could probably finish uh, the quilt top at least in a few hours. I really liked the colors. Um, I don't buy too many Halloween fabrics, but like I said, when I saw this quilt, I thought, oh, there's something that I can make quickly and I can feature um, these fun fabrics in the quilt. And I like that it uses other colors like purples and pinks as well as black and orange. And these ghosts were super cute and nice and bright. And then this is the last one I have from that fabric line. And then the second fabric line that I have to share with you, I didn't pick up all of the fabrics from the line, just the larger scale prints because that's what I usually like to work with. Um, this is from Juicy Juice. His fabric line is inspired by his grandmother and it's called Nana. And I really liked these floral prints. I liked that they're sort of squares. I'm not sure what I'll make with them, but uh, my favorite print was this white background print. I like the, the gray really pops with the white background. And then here's another one from the same design and then one with uh, a dark gray background. So um, links to both of these fabric lines are in the description. I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. Uh, what is your favorite memento from family and friends since we were talking about that um, fabric line from Juicy, Juicy Juice inspired by his grandmother? Um, let me know in the comments if you have um, perhaps a bit of clothing, maybe a quilt or a keepsake from family member or friend. Um, what's your favorite one? Let me know in the comments. Um, Violet and I were going to make um, apple cider caramels today I had to purchase a couple ingredients to make them but we got sidetracked because she found a recipe for something else that she wanted to make instead so we made that earlier we'll probably make the caramels tomorrow night but I wanted to share the recipe with you uh, I found this on Etsy um, not for sale it was on the Etsy blog Danny's going to post a picture of the caramels from the this picture is from the Etsy blog and the recipe I linked to in the description, but um, the main item that I needed to purchase that I wanted to, it was sort of optional. You could either use apple cider or something called, I've never heard of this before, but boiled apple, boiled apple cider. I bought um, a little bottle from King Arthur Flour. I guess they have a baking section on their website, but I wanted to follow the recipe exactly. So I did go for the boiled apple cider and uh, we're going to make these caramels uh, tomorrow. I'll let you know how it goes uh, next week on the show, but I did want to post the recipe because um, we're still kind of in the fall season and the recipe sounded super, super good. So um, yeah, looking forward to enjoying some caramels, but I have another question for you. Let me know in the comments, what is your favorite cold weather treat? Uh, me, I love hot chocolate. William also likes hot chocolate. He'll have chocolate, hot chocolate any time of the year, in fact, but 
Let me know what your favorite uh, cold weather treat is in the comments, either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you watch our show. Okay, so today in lieu of the book review, I wanted to share with you this really fun quilt pattern that I got in the mail. Actually, I bought a quilt pattern as well as a kit um, and they arrived last night. So I thought, oh, great timing uh, to share on the show. So Danny's going to post a picture on the screen of the quilt. This is the Alaska Rainbow Quilt from Laundry Basket Quilts. And there's a few options available on Edita Sitar's website. And if you're only interested in the pattern, um, Danny, if you wouldn't mind switching to the overhead, um, the pattern is available uh, by itself if you're just interested in the pattern. Um, however, there's a couple of options for kits. There's a, a rainbow fabric option for solids for this quilt pattern cover, but I actually bought, I saw that they had, I know this is a bit of a splurge, but I thought I wanted to get sewing on a quilt um, sooner rather than later, so I bought the quilt with the pre-cut, the quilt kit with the pre-cut pieces. So first off, the box is really nice. Um, this is, oh, it's really shiny. Uh, yeah, I'll try to hold it like that. Okay, so this is, the instructions don't come with the kit. So if you're interested in instructions, you have to purchase those separately. Um, there's three different styles of blocks. Uh, so here's one style, here's the second style, and here's the third, and they're basically just repeated. Uh, 12 blocks total um, with an extra 13th block. Um, blocks 1 through 12, you repeat those four times each, and then the 13th block is just the single block. Um, but this was what come in, came in the kit. I already started working on block one, which I'll share with you in just a second, but they're all cut out for you already and labeled. So this is block two and so on. Uh, the... There's borders on the outside, so that border fabric's included as well. I know this is super lazy, but um, I did want to make a second one, so I did end up buying the acrylic templates so that I could cut out these um, very specific triangle pieces and make a second quilt. Um, but let me share with you uh, the block one that I finished already. Um, so as I said, almost all the blocks you make four of, and so <laughs> this is my block one. It was pretty quick and easy to put together. Um, I don't normally sew with this type of colors with sort of like a cream background, but I thought it would be really interesting. And the second version of the quilt I'm going to make probably with a white background and similar colors, but like brighter solids. So um, I probably spent an, maybe an hour making these four blocks. Um, like I said, super fast. And I woke up this morning hitting the ground running. I was so excited to start working on the, the quilt blocks since the kit came yesterday. And again, um, this is uh, the Alaska Rainbow, uh, either just the quilt pattern if you're interested or there's kits on her website and links to all of that is in the description. So um, next up, a few weeks ago, I don't remember who it was, but someone, uh, oh, thank you, Danny. Uh, before we get over to my demonstration, I would like to invite all the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad and we're so happy that you're here. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. And um, I did write myself a note for something which I forgot to mention at the top of the show, but I know they're still watching. Happy anniversary to Melissa and Renee. Their anniversary was, I think Danny said, past Friday. Past Friday. Thank you, Danny. Uh, happy anniversary to both of you. And if you usually watch on YouTube, I'm sure you've seen Melissa and Renee commenting, especially happy before the show. <laughs> happy anniversary. So. Um, the demonstration for today, uh, someone asked on the show a few weeks ago if I could put together a sort of beginner bag makers toolkit. And so I had that on my list. I thought it was a really great idea. When I was thinking about what would be in my beginner bag makers toolkit, I thought, you know, over the past four and a half years, I've reviewed so many notions on the show. How am I going to choose which ones are the most important? And so I didn't have to go far. I just looked on my cutting table, which is at this table I'm sitting at right now. I keep a certain selection of items on the corner of the table because I'm either sewing a bag, uh, we're filming a video for making a bag, or I'm uh, designing a new bag pattern. And so these are the items I keep on my table because I'm using pretty much every single time. And so um, this is not an exhaustive list. Um, I wanted to start relatively small because this is for 
a beginner bag maker. I didn't want it to be overwhelming with two dozen notions. And so these are what I feel in my opinion, at least for my own sewing, the most important for bag making. So um, Danny's going to switch over to the overhead camera and I'm going to share the items that I use um, every time for every bag. So in my patterns, all squares and rectangles in the patterns are not represented by pattern pieces, but they need to be um, measured out. And so I have two rulers that I keep on my table. Um, perhaps not necessary to have two, but I like to have a smaller one for smaller squares or rectangles and then the larger one. So my smaller one, um, they're both made by OmniGrid. They're the OmniGrip rulers with uh, a little grip on the back. And uh, I have a six inch by 12 inch ruler and I also have a 24 inch by six inch ruler. So uh, I started off actually with a six and a half inch by 24 inch and I was always getting mixed up by that extra half inch and cutting things wrong all the time. So I swapped it out for an even six inch ruler. So these are great, like I said, for measuring squares or rectangles. Um, also good for, I should mention, um, if you're cutting binding, if you need to cut it on the bias, there's uh, different angles marked on the ruler, such as 45 degree angles. So you can line that up on the uh, corner edge of your fabric. There's other um, markings as well, but I'm usually using the, the 45 degree if I'm using um, this for bag making. Okay, the next thing on my list is Clover Chaco. I should mention about Clover Chaco. They do make it in other colors. I would like to discourage you against the other colors because I've used other colors such as pink, blue, yellow, they have silver, and those colors for whatever reason did not, the chalk is supposed to wipe away from your fabric when you're done marking, and for some reason the other colors don't um, mark, wipe away completely. So I recommend only the white, and it's great for two things. One is for marking on dark fabrics, um, it has a little wheel which as it moves it dispenses the chalk and it only goes in one direction so if you're trying to use it and it's not moving that means uh, wrong direction just swap it over to the other side uh, as you can see marked and then it'll wipe away um, not all immediately but you know certainly over time second thing for um, marking Besides dark fabrics, um, if you're marking anything on the right side of the bag, basically anything that might be seen in the finished bag, you always want to use, um, I recommend using either clover chaco or another chalk um, because you don't want to have any markings that you can see when the bag is finished. So say for instance, I'm marking placement for handle pieces. I'll use the clover chaco for the markings of the handles. I'll sew my handles in place and then when the bag's done, all this will just brush away. Um, number three on my list is friction pens and I use friction pens for marking kind of like the clover chaco but um, I for me personally when I'm cutting out my pattern pieces I like to draw my pattern pieces on the wrong side of the fabric um, so I'll use the friction pens for say I need a, a rectangle I need to cut that out so I'll mark the rectangle on the wrong side of the fabric and then I know a lot of people like to use a rotary cutter I just, like I mentioned last, I think it was last week, I'm a big fan of just marking and cutting out with scissors. And so um, I'll just mark on the wrong side of the fabric. I would like to mention, let me get my iron heated up. If you're marking on the right side of the fabric, I recommend using the Clover Chaco instead. While the friction pens do erase with the heat of an iron, um, and let me, let me get this marked up with some markings from my friction pens and these are kind of older, so they're, I guess, a little bit weaker right now. But um, I recommend not using this on the right side of the fabric because even though the heat of the iron, I need to heat this up a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Even though the iron will remove it and you can kind of, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can. So even though the heat of the iron did remove the markings, you can kind of see like a, a ghostly little shadow. So friction pens are great, but I really only use them on the wrong side of the fabric because of that reason, those little ghostly lines, you don't want those showing up when the bag is finished. And I've heard stories from friends that it also happens sometimes when it's super cold outside, the markings will just sort of reappear similar to that. Okay, n next on my list for beginner bag makers is a good pair of scissors. And I always get questions about what scissors I use. So these are Kai number 7205 scissors. I've used in the past two other brands. I've had these probably since 
maybe 2013, so I've had these for a lot of years already. Other scissors made my hands feel really tired after a while from opening and closing, and the Kai scissors are really smooth and they don't feel heavy on my hands. They don't make my hands feel sore and they cut through fabric super great. Like people always say they cut through the fabric like butter. So super smooth, nice clean cuts. Um, having a great pair of scissors, I know it sounds simple, but uh, it makes sewing that much more fun and easy. The next tool I have that I love is the precision turning tool. And this is a metal tool with a tip. It's not pointy. It's got this um, round metal ball. And this is really great for several things. You can use it as a stiletto, meaning um, as you're feeding fabric through your sewing machine, you can use this end to kind of hold the fabric down. But what I usually use it for is if I'm making a pocket or even a pillow where I've sewn two pieces of fabric right sides together. When you turn everything right side out and you need to poke out the corners, this is the tool for that because of the round ball. It won't um, puncture through your corner of the fabric or rip through the stitches. It'll just give you a nice uh, tidy corner. And again, uh, this is the precision turning tool. Of course, everyone needs a seam ripper and this is the seam ripper that I use. It's the seam fix seam ripper and it's got sort of a little rubber tip on the front and the back. Um, this will help you um, after you've seam ripped and you've got tons of little threads all over the place. This little rubber tip, all you need to do is run it over um, the area of the fabric where all those threads are and this rubber tip will pull those threads out of the fabric so you can uh, get those released and um, get back to sewing and have a nice uh, neat area of fabric without all those little threads hanging out. Drift Wash Away Wonder Tape. I super love this. Um, it's really great for um, installing zippers or holding fabrics. Um, it's a quarter of an inch wide and it's double sided tape. So um, you stick it down wherever you need it to be stuck. Just push it down with your fingers. What I usually do is I take my fingernail and sort of push down on the corner to kind of lift the paper up and then the paper just peels back and that reveals the second side of the adhesive. Good for things like um, uh, if you're attaching uh, a zipper, which I wouldn't exactly attach it this way, but just to give you a demonstration. So it will temporarily hold the zipper without pins, keeping your zipper nice and flat. And it's, uh, I can't remember if I already mentioned it was water soluble. So if you perhaps put it in the wrong place or after you've installed your zipper and you still see some of the stickiness, you can just spritz it with um, a water bottle, um, give it a kind of little wiggle with your fingernail, and then that adhesive will dissolve since it's water soluble. Again, that's just wash away wonder tape. And then the last thing um, my must have for bag makers is wonder clips. So I, this is my little container that I keep on my desk with all my wonder clips. These are great for, um, not only for bag making, I use this for holding quilt blocks, like those quilt blocks that I just shared with you, when I was holding the fabrics right sides together, I, I did use my Wonder Clips for that. And they, uh, they do have markings. I really usually don't use the markings, but they have markings on the bottom for um, a quarter inch and I think half inch also in case you need to um, measure that edge. Perhaps you're working on quilt binding and you need to measure that edge as well. Um, besides these, I added two extra things, kind of bonus things in there. Um, our seam guide, which Danny's gonna put a picture up on the screen of the seam guide. Um, this is just a handy tool for um, finding seam allowance on your sewing machine and your needle will just slide into the slot on the right hand side depending on what seam allowance you need. Um, I have a full video demonstrating the seam allowance um, if you're interested in that and the link to that seam guide is in the description with the video. And then of course um, I always get questions about what thread I use so um, this is Orphil 40, uh, 40 weight thread. I also have on my machine that I was using earlier, uh, 50 weight thread. So the 40 weight thread is thicker and the 50 weight thread is thinner. For my quilt blocks, I was using the 50 weight thread right here today, earlier today. Um, everyone has their own personal preference with thread, but I wanted to mention um, what thread I use since I get the, this question very often. So um, that is my bag makers toolkit. Link to all the items is in the description. Maybe you're a beginner bag maker or 
you have a friend or family member that would like to get into sewing bags, but um, they need a few more tools perhaps in their bag making toolkit. Um, so um, all these items are in the description. And of course, like I mentioned earlier, this is not an exhaustive list, but just the things that I for sure have to have on my cutting table before I start working on a bag. All right, so I will be answering some questions live in just a minute. So if you have a question for me, let me know in the comments. Um, it can be a bag making related question, general sewing question, question about a notion or tool. Type your question right now in the comments, either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching our show. And Danny will be looking out for the questions. Um, he is able to spot them a little bit more easily if you remember to type uh, either a question mark before your question or type it in capital letters. Um, don't fear if you've forgotten to do that. Um, he's still on the lookout and uh, he'll be posting those questions up on the screen in just a minute. Before we get over to the questions, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway and that winner is Arlene Wade. So congratulations to Arlene. Please email me after the show so that I can get you set up with your prize. And uh, my email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. And there's another giveaway at the end of today's show, so stay tuned for that. All right, Danny. Um, would the lint magnet work with batting left in the cutting mat? Um, I don't have any batting handy to, to check out, but uh, I'm assuming it would since it picked up really everything else, the bits of fabric, the thread, um, the lint on my daughter's pants. I'm going to have to remember after the show to rinse that lint magnet off before I continue working on her pants because as you saw, I just got all that pink, uh, all those pink fibers from that fabric that I cut up all over her pants. Oops. <laughs> Diane says, is there a way to renew a cutting mat? Um, I have heard, shoot, I can't recall off the top of my head. I know there's a way. I know at least a few people watching have the answer to Diane's question. So let me know in the comments um, what you do to restore your cutting mat. Um, Marie says, do you use fat quarters or yardage? That's a great question. So since I'm generally making bags, I'm usually buying one yard pieces. If it's for a smaller project like a pouch, perhaps a half yard or a fat quarter, but fat quarter, you probably want to know what kind of pouch you're making at that point because you're uh, working with such a small amount of fabric, at least for bag making. But I'm generally purchasing, especially if I don't know what I'll be making with that particular fabric, uh, one yard piece. Wendy says, um, yay, interfacing is on sale as at Joann's 50% off. What should we stack up on, please? So that's a great question. So for sure, pick up some Pellon Shape Flex. Um, you can use that for your lining fabrics unless you're using um, a waterproof canvas. Um, in that case, you're probably skipping the Shape Flex on your lining. Um, most of my patterns use foam interfacing and Joann's should have um, Pellon Flex Foam. You want to steer clear of the Naked Flex Foam, which is the cheapest one. Um, that one is not coated with a thin layer of fabric on the top and the bottom and is very, very trying to sew with. So you want to just get the regular Flex Foam, either the sew-in if you like a sew-in foam or a single-sided fusible if that's the type of foam that you normally use. Um, oops, Danny, I think I missed that question that you had up previously. Should we go back to that one or? Um, Charlotte says, soaking the cutting mat in the bathtub. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you so much. Um, that's for cleaning your cutting mat off. Um, Sarah says, the Alaska quilt, does that fabric have a sheen to it? So the fabric that I'm using in the Alaska quilt is fabric from Moda and I can't remember it wasn't a solid it reminds me of Moda grunge I mean yeah Moda grunge but less texture um, darn it uh, yeah I'll have to look that up after the show because I definitely meant to write it down and I've forgotten so the the cover quilt if you're making it in solids the the actual original cover quilt was made in um, century solids from Andover fabrics but the ones that came in the quilt, quilt kit are a little bit more textured, so not completely solid. Carol says, cutting mat smoother uh, buffer. Um, Lorraine says, Aunt Pam's quilt sponge heals cutting mats. I'm going to have to write that down for a future show. Thank you. Aunt Pam's quilt sponge. Um, Carol says, also missed your mat about once a week. They last longer and won't crack when they're moist. That's a good tip. Thank you, Carol. Julie says, where can I buy a 36 by 60 inch cutting board that is good quality? Um, 
I picked up a couple of large cutting mats, um, maybe that size, maybe a little bit bigger, maybe 72 inches from my distributor. Um, I don't call the manufacturer off the top of my head, but I'd be happy to help you out after the show if you'd like to email me. Uh, my email is sarah at sosweetness.com. Um, Jane says, proud member of the So Sweetness squad and my first time catching you live from the United Kingdom. Thanks so much for watching us live, Jane, and making time in your day. I know it's uh, a little bit dicey, especially for um, non-U.S. residents, since it could be sometimes in the middle of the night uh, in your part of the world when our show comes on, especially with daylight savings time. I know not everyone um, changes time according to daylight savings. Um, Sharon says, can anyone recommend a white marker to use with the zipper template? I can't get into the opening well with the charcoal. Um, the friction pens should work. I haven't tried to use, let's see what else I have up here. Uh, I haven't personally used this, but I feel like it would work in the zipper pocket template, or zipper pocket uh, acrylic templates. This is from Soline. Um, this is the Soline Trio with three different uh, colors of pencil. I, I do love this, but I didn't men mention it as part of the beginner bag makers toolkit just because I don't use it 100% of the time like I do for the Clover Chaco. Um, Alex says, how long do the Kai scissors stay sharp before you have to sharpen them? I think the last time I sharpened these was, it was when I talked about it on the show last, so maybe four-ish four years ago. Yeah, sounds, sounds about right. They're still going strong. I don't know when I'll send them in for sharpening again, but uh, it's been a few years for sure. Um, Diane says, Martelli Notions has that size map. Oh, that was the question from earlier about that big cutting mat. Um, again, that was uh, Martelli Notions. Check their website. Retha says, I bought the seam guide, but not sure how to use it. Can you help? So we do. I do have a video in the product listing for the seam guide. And since I just talked about it on the show today, that link is in the description. So um, just click on the link in the description and that should pop up. Um, Elizabeth says, what should you use for a waterproof fabric inside a backpack? So I know a lot of people like to use waterproof canvas for linings because they can skip uh, using extra interfacing like ShapeFlex. Um, Charlotte says, do you think polyester thread, thread is better or stronger for bag making? So there's, over the years I've heard several opinions. Um, I've heard the opinion that you should use the same substrate in the thread as you do in the fabric. So if you're using quilting cotton, which is generally 100% cotton, you should use cotton thread. I've heard that as well. Um, I've heard that uh, polyester thread, because it's not a natural fiber, is stronger. And I do, I can verify that that's the case, not because I've had a bag rip or tear, because I've not had that happen, but uh, for garment sewing, when I first started garment sewing years ago, I was making dresses in quilting cotton, and I did make a couple with um, cotton thread, and I bent over and I could hear all the threads ripping down the back. So um, for garment sewing, especially using in a serger or a cover stitch machine, polyester thread. Um, again, everyone has their own personal preference. If you like polyester thread for bag making, that's perfectly fine. If you like um, cotton thread for bag making, that's fine too. Dalvis, Dalvis says, would using cotton thread to sew over the seatbelt webbing? Um, I did make uh, a couple months ago a bag. I made a version of the Starling bag and it did have um, the seatbelt webbing for the strap. And I, I did just use the, my Orifil thread, which is um, cotton thread for that. Mary, Marie says, when making a crossbody strap in vinyl, sometimes it twists. How can I stop that? So I, I don't think I posted this as a separate video yet, but a few weeks back I talked about using either grill grain ribbon or twill tape for um, placing in the middle of your straps before you fold your fabric and top stitch. So um, either of those are options. I think if you search in, on our YouTube channel, um, maybe stabilized straps or um, straight straps or firm straps, I think that should come up. If you're having trouble finding that though, feel free to email me and I'm happy to link you to that. Um, it's a really, really simple and easy extra strap that you step that you can take and it's not just good for vinyl it um, can be used for other straps like cotton straps as well um, let's see Renee says what do you want for your birthday this year <laughs> um, my birthday is at the end of the month uh, some years my birthday falls on Thanksgiving but I think that's about every four years my birthday's on 
uh, November 28th, and I'm going to be 40 years old this year. <laughs> uh, Sierra says, hi, Danny. I see the tape on your sewing machine. Is that a half inch seam? That's correct. So um, you probably, if you've watched a few of my videos, um, my bag making videos, you'll, you've probably seen the, the pink polka dot tape I have on the bed of my sewing machine. Because my sewing machine does not have a, an engraving for a half inch seam allowance, it has 5 eighths of an inch but not half inch. I have washi tape on my sewing machine to designate that half inch seam allowance. Uh, so indeed that is what that um, tape on my sewing machine is for. Um, Susan says, what cutting mat do you use? Uh, my main cutting mat is on the floor. I can't grab it. Mm, I'll have to, There's asking what kind, just tell me. I don't even know without looking at it what brand it is. Uh, it might be an Ulfa mat, but I'm, I'm not sure. I have, mm, thank you, Danny. Danny's gonna grab it for me. <laughs> I have a nice size cutting table over here, so I wanted to get a, sort of a rather larger mat just so I could use it for cutting so quilt fiskers. blocks. Fiskers, and what's the dimensions of it? 24 by 36. Thank you. Um, Danny let me know very kindly that my regular cutting mat is a Fiskars brand cutting mat and the size of my mat is 24 inches by 36 inches. I do have some smaller mats, but that's the one I use on a regular basis. Um, Laura says, will there be another sew along coming up? Uh, you know what the holiday is coming up? I'm not sure, uh, to be honest. I did prepare for additional sew alongs for um, the previous four patterns that I came out with. I'm not sure if we'll go with that or if we'll go with something else, but uh, let me think about it some more. I want to try to avoid the holidays because I know people are busy either getting ready or sewing gifts uh, for friends or family members. Um, what have you made with Tula's new webbing? I actually haven't used it yet and we're just about sold out. I, I did order a lot and I reordered it, but you know, we still sold out twice over. Um, I talked about it recently on a show. This is one and a half inch wide um, webbing. It's not exactly seatbelt webbing, but it's pretty, pretty darn close. Um, this was the most popular color, this one right here. Um, the manufacturer let me know that they were expecting some more to arrive at the end of November. So, um, Hopefully we'll be able to snag some more when it comes back in stock. And um, it would be great for replacing on just about every strap. You could substitute that webbing instead of um, the strap fabric, whether you're making just a regular strap or handle, or if you're making adjustable straps, that would work for that as well. Um, Joan says, is Bozal Fashion Fuse an acceptable substitution for shape blocks? I'm going to be completely honest. I've not used Bozal Fashion Fuse, or if I have, it's in a, far off distant memory, um, but if you have used that in place of shape flax, let me know in the comments. Um, Danny will try to look out for that. Linda says, turn your mat over every six months. Thank you so much, Linda. Um, I did not know that, but I'll certainly try to remember to do that. Linda says, when are you guys going to post to Australia? Um, that is an unfortunate situation. Um, the United States Postal Service um, notified everyone on, I think it was September 17th, around there, um, that they were cutting off service temporarily to Australia due to pandemic-related carrier issues, and then New Zealand and other countries soon followed after that. So um, for now, they're only offering Express, which is quite expensive. So um, I don't know. I've been checking since then to see if... Um, They've added New Zealand and Australia back, but unfortunately for the time being, um, we're temporarily not allowed, not able to ship to uh, those two countries. Um, what do you call the silver product that is used inside cooler bags? Um, Insul Bright or Insul Fleece, uh, those are both insulated products, good for lunch bags or coolers. Um, it's a fleece product and one side is sort of a, a shiny side which reflects either hot or cold inside the bag. So if uh, it's like cold sodas, um, the insulated portion keeps the, the cold inside the bag. Brenda says, has anyone used heat and bond iron on vinyl? Um, does it work well? Do you use a special needle to sew that fabric with it adhered? So you do want to use either a walking foot or a Teflon foot. I usually use a Teflon foot. I did purchase some and it's on my short list to uh, demonstrate on Social Sunday. I haven't gotten to it yet, but uh, maybe I can get to it uh, this month to review on the show. 
Um, Candy says, yes, Bozo Fashion Fuse can be used instead of SF-101, similar product. Thank you so much, Candy, for that. Um, Rosemary says, is the turning tool from your shop? Um, the precision turning tool, yes, we do have it in our shop, and the link to the precision turning tool is in the description. Um, Kathy says, is there a reason your patterns use a uh, quarter inch seam allowance instead of three eighths or a half inch? So I tend to jump between a quarter inch seam allowance and half inch seam allowance. I've used three eighths very sparingly, usually when I'm trying to veer toward a larger seam allowance. I, for the pouches, I'm generally for sure using, such as most of the Minikins projects, the quarter inch seam allowance. Um, for bags, I guess it depends. Um, sometimes the bigger bags or sewing on the bottom panel, I'll do, for instance, a half inch seam allowance and trim down to a quarter. Um, I guess I don't have a hard and fast every single time I'm using the seam allowance, but um, I'm generally um, noting the seam allowance, at least in the newer patterns from the last few years, noting the seam allowance in every step. Wendy says, do you have an opinion on iron on vinyl? I saw there's a new brush on liquid vinyl as well. There is a new brush on liquid vinyl. I, always ha I also have that one waiting to demo on Social Sunday. Uh, again, I haven't yet. Um, I do like OD Code a lot. Um, I, I've reviewed that previously for a um, sort of a gel that you brush on to make your fabric laminated. I've demonstrated a couple different iron-on vinyls, um, one from Pellon and one from, might have been Thermoweb. I, I do like the Pellon Matte uh, Vinyl Fuse, which we saw in our shop. Um, Cindy says, what, I missed this so long. I'm sorry you missed it, Cindy. Um, sign up to the newsletter. Yes, um, if you'd like to sign up to our newsletter, um, we usually send out newsletters at least twice a month. Um, the last few weeks we've been sending it more often due to the sew along and um, what else? Uh, I did mention the sew along in the Facebook group in case you remember or on the live shows. Maybe you missed the last few weeks, but you still have time to jump in. Um, we have until November 15th to post the finished chickadee backpack. So if you're interested in joining along, it's not too late. Um, you still have time to enter the drawings for weeks three and four. And um, the link to week four is in the description. Linda says, have you tried Glide Thread? How do you feel about it? I feel like someone's mentioned this on the show recently. I don't know if I've purchased some yet. Uh, I'll write myself another note just in case I don't have it waiting for me in the notions box. <laughs> I have a box of stuff waiting to review on the show, so uh, let me write myself a reminder in case I don't have that already. Um, are you calling it on the questions, Danny? All right, I apologize if I did not get to your questions live, but I'll be back again next week. Danny will be joining me live next week, and I'll be answering more questions. Gosh, I feel like every week the show just sort of flies by so fast. Um, are you joining me next week? You are. Uh, one more thing we have to get to tonight is the giveaway, and tonight I'm giving away a $40 gift certificate to my website, SoSweetness.com. Um, it's a randomly drawn winner, and all of your comments from tonight, whether you're commenting on YouTube or Facebook, all of those, we add all those together and draw a randomly drawn winner. And um, for an extra giveaway entry, I have another question for you tonight. You have until the end of the day this Saturday to comment and I'll draw a winner and announce the winner on next Sunday's show. My extra bonus question is what notion can't you do without? Since I've been talking about the notions on the show today, let me know the one notion you absolutely must, must have every time you sit down to sew a bag. I guess I'd have to say these wonder clips. Uh, wonder clips are a huge game changer and um, certainly great for holding the thick layers um, that one encounters when sewing a bag. So let me know your answer in the comments. Thanks for all the likes, shares, and thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you for your likes, shares, and subscribes, as Danny's mentioned. Um, I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye, everybody.